Hi, it's me again, Deepak. After a while, I've been really busy and I'm off to Ireland tonight. So I thought I'd share some comments with you. I've been reading, or rather rereading, two books. Uh, one is uh, by Irvin Laszlo. It's called Reenchantment of the Cosmos. And the other is by Michio Kaku uh, called Hyperspace. And um, a lot of thoughts are occurring in my mind. And uh, as a result of insights, um, from these two great writers, but also as a result of all the thinking I've been doing uh, the last few days. And it's becoming very clear from what these people say and from the findings of other scientists that um, the biosphere, the noosphere, the geosphere, the astrosphere, the theosphere are all part of one single reality that the whole universe and maybe other universes too all function as one wholeness one coherence one interwoven interconnectedness one um, non-local field one harmony one correspondence um, one correlation and that uh, distance in space and time as well as uh, uh, appearance in diversity and uh, the appearance of different people and the appearance of different objects is all really a differentiated expression of that one wholeness and is in appearance only. I think it's becoming very clear that uh, all these multidimensional levels of reality are contained in one wholeness in one uh, unified field, if you will, in one uh, zero-point energy field or akashic field or consciousness field, if, um, if you want to use any of those words. Quantum entanglement is, is a fact of uh, physics now. Nobody argues about it anymore. First proposed as the einstein podolsky rosen equation, then Relooked at the relooked at as Bell's theorem, and then proven experimentally by Alain Aspect in 1980, and since then experimentally shown in many other situations. We know that at some level, every particle in the universe is connected to every other particle, instantly, unmitigated, unmediated, instantaneous correlation, connection, correspondence, and harmony. And this explains actually many things uh, in nature, including simultaneity. A hundred trillion cells in the human body doing hundred thousand activities per second, every cell instantly knowing what every other cell is doing. In addition, of course, this also explains the process of morphogenesis and differentiation, how one cell um, at conception divides only 50 times to become the hundred trillion cells in your body, all differentiating simultaneously, heart cells, kidney cells, brain cells, gonads, fingernails, hair follicles, all at once, but in total coinciding with each other's activities without sending each other energy or information signals. I hope this gets clarified even further so that we begin to understand that our minds, our bodies, um, are actually part of this wholeness and that uh, consciousness is the fundamental reality in which all this happens. Right now you're looking at my picture. What's going through the airwaves right now and I'm using a wireless um, computer is just disturbances of electromagnetic waves. Somehow through a series of transmissions they reach your computer from where as photons they get to your retina, from where um, as electromagnetic impulses they get to your neurons and somehow in consciousness they are translated into this sound in this picture that you're hearing. So sound is not coming across the airwaves nor is this picture and there's no picture in your brain either, there's no picture in your eye cells, the picture is in your consciousness. And if you can see me right now, then you're experiencing me in your consciousness. And that's where we experience everything, both our subjective experiences and our objective experiences. 
that's uh, where you and I are in the same place. And of course, being non-local, it's not a place, it's outside of space-time, it's our real home. Despite some objections on Intent blog that uh, uh, Nisargadatta Maharaj did not mean that consciousness, that, that unitive consciousness, outside, outside of space-time when he said, I am that, you are that, all this is that, or just I am that that uh, I think that is the only reality. Everything else is a transient, ephemeral, uh, temporary, diaphanous, impermanent uh, uh, pattern of behavior of that one unit of consciousness. And we are that. It's not uh, getting away from reality. It is the only reality. A person is not really real because a person is a transient manifestation, a transient pattern of behavior of that reality. I don't know, when I think these thoughts, uh, I feel a profound joy and I'm happy to not be a person. Uh, because as long as you think of yourself as a person, you will see people everywhere. But when you realize that you are that unit of consciousness, then you see the divine everywhere. And there's great joy, there's great knowingness, there's great intuition, there's great love, there's great compassion in that experience. And there are moments when I have a lot of that, and I just want to share that with you, with all humility and gratitude for experiencing that. Um, I was uh, going to say a lot more, um, and um, I probably should tell you that uh, in Ireland, where we are doing the Seduction of Spirit course, we're also going to have a day for the Alliance for a New Humanity on the 10th. Uh, over a thousand people are coming from all over Europe um, to attend this. Uh, in my gut, I feel that there's a profound change and transformation going on at this moment in people, in institutions, and in society. That perhaps we may be reaching a critical mass where we begin to understand that we are one unified field and that everything else is a differentiated aspect of that field. That that one unified field creates a subject-object split within itself and experiences itself as both the observer, all these processes of observation, and all these objects of observation. And um, that our journey to enlightenment is to go back home from where we came while uh, traveling in all these multi-dimensions as well. You know, the Yoga Vashishta says infinite universes come and go in the vast expanse of consciousness. They're like little motes of dust that are dancing in a beam of light that's shining in, uh, through a hole uh, from my roof. Infinite worlds come and go in the vast expanse of consciousness. They're like motes of dust dancing in a beam of light that's shining through a hole in my roof. I can feel that sometimes, that all these worlds are actually different frequency domains of consciousness. And that uh, when we are in that unified field, we can then at will um, travel in these different dimensions. And that we have um, uh, actually very little to do other than exercise sankalp or seed of intention in that unified field to experience different realities. But even as we experience them, a sense of joy, connectedness, love, compassion, but also detachment comes. I was rereading some of the writings or translations of Buddha by Thich Nhat Hanh the other day. Uh, the translations of Buddha by Thich Nhat Hanh and in one of those I came across this beautiful verse that says, This lifetime of ours is transient as autumn clouds. To watch the birth and death of beings is like looking at the movements of a dance. A lifetime is like a flash of lightning in the sky, rushing by like a torrent down a steep mountain. But when you can watch that with detachment from the unified field, then it's all yours. The transient projections of consciousness are also yours but you realize that there's nothing to cling to and no one to do the clinging and in that detached awareness is the ability to love, to really love. Because as Tagore said, love is not a mere sentiment, not a mere emotion, but the ultimate truth at the heart of creation. 
I think one of the reasons that uh, many phys- 